What's up Simonix and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will share the different options that you got for your Ionic applications to store data in your application. That could be some kind of user preferences, settings, could be tokens, could be uh, bigger objects about users and we want to figure out which of the different storage packages that are available for Ionic applications is the best for your application, uh, what are the pros and the cons of the different packages. We're gonna look at three most popular, we're gonna take a look at Ionic storage, we're gonna take a look at capacitor storage and we're gonna look at SQLite uh, as a well standalone thingy that you can use in your mobile applications. In the end I will also share a few alternatives if none of the three fits your use case but I think usually one of these three works for all of us so let's dive right into it. Okay, let's start with Ionic Storage. Perhaps that's the first package you have used in the past and uh, right now it's in version 3 and it's still a great package. Got a lot of stars and forks on GitHub as well. Now, Ionic Storage is a key value storage. So you put in a key and some data for that key and that's all you need to do and basically all you need to understand about Ionic Storage. Um, Ionic Storage automatically uses the best storage, uh, the best engine available for storing your data. Let's quickly uh, figure out what that means. Um, by default, Ionic Storage will use IndexedDB uh, and local storage. Or if available and installed, it will use SQLite inside native applications. That means if you um, build your Ionic application just as a website or as a progressive web app, it will use IndexedDB or local storage. If you build it really out to a native iOS or Android application and install the according SQLite plugin, you can also use uh, that storage mechanism. And the cool thing is, the API from Ionic Storage is completely the same for all those three cases. Um, Ionic Storage wraps them, so you can easily uh, call functions, now we got examples, to get a name or to get something for a key, to remove something for a key, to set something for a key. It's really, the usage is quite easy. Now, uh, detailed information about local storage and IndexedDB, um, if you just use it like this without SQLite inside a native application, the operating system might at some point uh, decide to clear that data. So if you want to use Ionic Storage inside a real application, I always recommend to install the SQLite plugin. In terms of IndexedDB versus local storage, uh, I think local storage is actually a bit older. Um, local storage on the browser is usually meant for storing really small data in a synchronous way. So something like a short string, a short token, uh, something that you can easily access. IndexedDB was actually meant for more complicated tasks, so to store more data in it. Uh, IndexedDB is also usually connected in an asynchronous way, so you already see the difference. That means if you're using local storage and try to access a lot of data in a synchronous way, it will actually block your application. You don't really see all of this as it's happening in the background of Ionic Storage, but you always need to keep that in mind uh, when working with Ionic Storage. So uh, on the good side, Ionic Storage is definitely pretty easy to use and safe. Um, you got this super simple uh, API to access your keys, uh, remove them, clear them, uh, go through all of them. Uh, there's also the possibility of using encryption, uh, which comes with Ionic Secure Storage. We will talk about that in the end as well. Um, but on the downside of Ionic Storage, it's definitely if you're using or completely relying on IndexedDB and local storage, the operating system might clear your data at some point. And I also just recently saw that people on iOS had problems accessing IndexedDB as something internally in Safari or the web view has changed. Um, so you always rely on that. But with SQLite, it's quite easy to use Ionic Storage and still have a persistent storage. Now, let's talk about the second option available, which is Capacitor Storage. Um, uh, from the outset, it looks kind of the same. It's a simple key value persistent store for lightweight data. 
Um, maybe this is even more important for capacitor storage than it is for ionic storage. So with ionic storage, I actually stored like request data, objects, a lot of these things, and that works kind of okay in most cases um, if you don't overdo this. For capacitor storage, uh, it's a bit different since um, on the web, uh, and also within a progressive web app, it will just use local storage. So you need to be aware of that when using capacitor storage. For iOS and Android, capacitor storage will automatically use either user defaults on iOS or shared preferences on Android. Uh, if you take a look at the user defaults, um, that's basically, it's called default because uh, they're commonly used to determine an app's default state at startup. That means uh, you should have something like uh, the metrics settings of a user, the currency settings or preferences of a user, and the sh same counts for shared preferences on Android. But what I found interesting about Android is uh, one line. Uh, this, I can't find it right now, but this class, it begins with this class. Uh, this class provides strong consistency guarantees. Okay, that's pretty cool, but it is using expensive operations which might slow down an app. So really, capacitor storage is not meant for storing big objects and a lot of data inside your application. Uh, yes, technically you can do that, um, but I guess, especially on Android, this will come with performance downsides. So your app might take longer to load that data. Um, therefore, um, there's also the note, it's not meant to be as a local database. It's really meant to store little settings for your application. On top of that, capacitor storage comes with a tiny limitation, and that is, um, if you want to put some value for our key value storage, the value needs to be a string. Uh, in the case of Ionic storage that we've seen before, uh, where we got this set function, can we take a look at this right here? This here could easily be any kind of object that you got. It could be an array, could be basically anything, the value. In the case of capacitor storage, this has to be a string. So if you uh, actually want to store an object within capacitor storage, you're gonna have to call JSON stringify to make a string out of your object. And then uh, once you load it back from capacitor storage, you need to call JSON parse. And on top of what we read already in the shared preferences that it might take a bit longer or is slow uh, on Android, of course, this is another step that takes time. Not a lot of time if you just have an object with name and age or something like this, but if you have a big object or many objects that you got, have stringified before and now try to parse, that will add on top of the loading time uh, of loading from storage and then parsing the result. So really um, meant for uh, small data. But in that case, it's completely very persistent, not even using SQLite, but really these defaults uh, on the respective platforms. But again, on the downside, only strings allowed. And yeah, we got the storing of JSON objects, which is a bit more complicated. Now, the third option is, well, um, it's kind of already integrated with Ionic storage, but um, I want to take a look at this outside of Ionic storage, and that is using SQLite. So SQLite is a database that's available in all mobile applications, iOS or Android. And the good thing about um, SQLite storage is that you can access it with both a Cordova pl plugin, or there's also by now uh, plug in from the capacitor community to directly access it from capacitor. Um, the cool thing about SQLite is that you can work with SQL directly. It's also the bad thing you have to work <laughs> with SQL directly. Um, but really, this database is meant for storing a lot of data. Uh, I think, as far as I know, either uh, I found different uh, information about this, either the uh, maximum size is the physical size of your device or it's 50 MB. There's kind of difference between those two values, but I think 50 is just uh, for like the Safari web or something like this. So I really think you can store uh, as much as you want inside Cordova or, SQ, uh, or in general SQLite. Um, 
On top of that, a little note, if you think, cool, that's an SQL up database, I'm gonna use that, everything will be fine. Be aware that SQLite is really a light <laughs> version of SQL. That means you only got these values, null, integer, real text, blob. You already think, hmm, what's about date? Well, yeah, date, uh, not really, boolean, mm, no, not really. So it is really a, a very lightweight um, version of SQL. Still, there are plugins, uh, we had uh, tutorials on this in the past where you can use an SQL importer to actually import your SQL data into the SQLite database. Um, there's also a browser so you can easily uh, copy over that one file that represents your database from your app container, both iOS and Android, directly to your computer so you can easily debug those things. Um, little downside here, of course, it's only available inside a native application. If you develop your application usually inside the browser with Ionic Surf, you can't really do this with uh, SQLite. Nothing of this uh, will work, even the capacitor plugin here, uh, web, it's pretty red, so no fallback used for the web. Um, but uh, you can still get the benefits uh, which are accessing data like this with real SQL commands. You can query your data, you can filter it, you can uh, use these transactions. Um, so you get a lot better control over your data and can specifically access data. You can't do that with Ionic Storage. Ionic Storage uh, offers only this simplified API to uh, write and get keys um, while using uh, SQLite in the background. But with this pure plugin for either Cordova or Capacitor, you can now use these commands. But once again, downside, you really need to understand SQL to use this, but usually, um, I guess you know about that if you plan to use the SQLite database. So that's uh, everything about the three most common ways. I will also um, tell you a bit more about alternatives in the end, but now let's try and figure out which of these is the winner or which is the best for your case. All right, so all three of the uh, packages that we've seen are very decent solutions. Capacitor storage is usually meant for small chunks of data. Uh, Ionic storage can be used to store a bit bigger objects with the unified API quite easily. And SQLite uh, comes with the support for real SQL statements so you can query and filter the data and have a lot of data in a real database. My personal preference is actually to use Ionic Storage. I've used this over the years. I sometimes use Capacitor Storage in the last tutorials, but uh, Ionic Storage is just super easy to use. It will use the best available storage engine. So if I build my application just for the web or as a progressive web app, it will use usually IndexedDB if available or otherwise local storage. And I can quite easily put in the SQL Lite database by installing the adapter and then my data will still be very persistent on the device. None of these is the best package. You should try to figure out what your application really needs. If you just get really super small information, just a few strings and settings, well, then I would usually go with capacitor storage. If you got a bit bigger objects that you sometimes need to load, like perhaps even having a list of favorites or stuff like that that we used in the past, maybe even caching data, then I would turn to Ionic storage. If, on the other hand, you really got a lot of data, perhaps you even got SQL data and you want to pre-populate a local database on the device and you really want to query that data and you're fine with SQL, then no problem in using the SQL Lite directly. Just keep in mind that you can't really use uh, SQL in the commands inside your web application, so you can't really test it. You always have to do this on a device. As other alternatives, there are two things that I want to mention. Our first is uh, Ionic Secure Storage. This is a paid option from Ionic that you can uh, integrate with Ionic Storage, so it's additional layer, I would say. Maybe if you're interested in this, let me know and I will uh, take a look at Ionic Storage or Ionic Secure Storage for you, no problem. Ionic Secure Storage comes with the option to encrypt your data. 
Uh, you can also combine this with Identity Vault, an unpaid service from Ionic, to really have enterprise grade secure applications. Um, quick note, uh, with the Cordova SQLite uh, plugin, I think you can also use encryption, but then you have to somehow manage the encryption keys, so it can get uh, a bit tricky to figure this out correctly, and Ionic just did this for you with Ionic Secure Storage. I'm not getting paid for this, uh, just uh, <laughs> recapping the facts. Second alternative that I also used in the past is CouchDB, or actually PouchDB on a device. PouchDB is a NoSQL database with JavaScript. You can have a full NoSQL database in your application and with a cool sync mechanism, you can sync that database to a server that runs with uh, CouchDB or I think Cloudant is also a company to sync your data between your application and the database. Of course, there are tons of other uh, available options. You can just use your own API to store your data, Firebase, uh, Superbase. These are other options, but the three that we've seen usually cover like 95% of the use cases that you could have in your Ionic application. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions about the storage options, just let me know inside the comments. Of course, hit the like button and subscribe for more Ionic videos and go check out my Ionic Academy, the place to learn everything about Ionic courses, community templates, everything that you need to get better and build epic Ionic apps. I will hopefully catch you inside the next video. Have a great week of <laughs> storing your data in Ionic applications or just build some great apps. And I will catch you next week, like always. So happy coding, Simon.